We got the Adidas Light Strike Pro. We got the Saucony Power Run PB. We got the Nike Zoom X. And our wild card for the day, we got some P-backs here in the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. What's up guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Ioana, founder and CEO of Subwell, and today we are doing a very special comparison video. We are going to be looking at a bunch of the popular super foams on the market to let you know the differences between each of them, how they've performed for us, and what they're best for in your rotation. Let's get into it. All right guys, so today for this batch of super foam showdown, I'm gonna be looking at four of the main super foams on the market today. Three of them are super popular, probably the three most popular racing super foams. Then I have one bonus one that's a bit of a wild card in there just to show you how the super foam can be pretty variable and, and depend on the application. First up, I'm gonna dive into this Light Strike Pro here in the Adidas Takumi set. Now, this Light Strike Pro is firmer, it's bouncier, it's not as cushioned as some of the other ones we have on this list, but it's highly responsive. It's a super critical TPE, meaning there's been gas injected into it, and super critical foams like we see in the Brooks lineup, like we see in the Endorphin Elite, and like we see here, tend to have a bit more of a bouncy, resilient, responsive feel, almost like those bouncy balls that you used to be able to pick up in the drugstore from a little turning machine, you throw the quarter in, a ball comes out. But you can think of that like a super critical foam. So what we have in the Takumi Sen with these carbon fiber rods is a foam that's very lightweight, very bouncy, and is a bit firmer to the touch than some of the other ones. It's not gonna give you a cushion and plush ride like we see in competitors in the market, but it is gonna give you a very fast, no frills ride. This foam is gonna be best for that runner who's super efficient and can put down a lot of power in their stride. I think of like a lower cadence runner, for example, or a heavier runner, they can get the most use out of this super critical TPE. Next up, we have the Power Run PB, which here is in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. And the Power Run PB is a bit softer, it's a bit more cushioned, it's still very bouncy, but the main property that comes to mind when thinking of the Power Run PB is that soft, bouncy feel. So this is a beaded Piba. You can see here that there's a bunch of these little expanded beads throughout the platform. That's what makes up the foam. And it's a Piba compound like we see in the Tracksmith, like we see in the Nike as well. This foam is probably the most forgiving and also the most versatile out of the bunch. It feels okay at slower paces. Unlike the Adidas Light Strike Pro, you're not gonna wanna do any easy running in that in the, Pro, in the Adidas Pro 3 or in the Takumi Sen. Whereas this Power Run PB, both in the Endorphin Speed 3 and the Pro 3, is a bit more versatile and it handles those slower paces better. Because it's softer though, it really does benefit from having that full carbon fiber plate. And the Endorphin Speed 3, I know that's a very loved shoe. I did a video on why it's so popular, but it's a bit too soft for my liking for any speed work because that Power Run PB compound is just a bit more forgiving and softer than some of the other super foams when it's not reinforced with that carbon fiber plate. All right guys, next up we got the famed Nike Zoom X. This again is a PIBA material, it's the original, it's PBAX. This first came out in 2018 in that original 4% shoe and the Zoom X is gonna be a softer compound, a bit firmer to the touch but definitely softer underfoot and what I love about this is when I'm running in the Vaporfly especially, it feels like there's nothing on my foot, it just completely melts away. So with the plate and with the way that the forefoot is designed in here, that Zoom X really gives you a light, airy ride. That's the best way I would describe it. It's a very ethereal feeling foam. Unlike the Pro 3 from Saucony, which is bouncier, this one just feels like you're floating. That's, that's the best way to describe it. You float along, you glide along, it's that light, airy, ethereal compound. Last, we have another PBAX powered shoe here. That is the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. And in this Elliott Runner, we see two different types of PBAX. We have a super critical PBAX, and that's in the sock liner in here, which is removable. And then we have standard PBAX throughout the length of the midsole, which is not injected with gas and a bit firmer to the touch. 
This is the most interesting application of a super foam I've seen on the market yet because it's in a daily trainer and it's not designed to give you that super bouncy, uh, buoyant feel. It's designed to give you a more cushioned, natural experience. This isn't gonna be as fast as those other three and it's also gonna be a bit firmer even than something like the Endorphin Speed 3 at those slower speeds because the P-Backs and the way they formulate it in here is designed for longevity and durability that you wanna see from a daily trainer, not for speed like you wanna see in an up-tempo shoe or a race day shoe. All right guys, now let's talk through durability. So for the most durable, I'm gonna put the Tracksmith Elliott Runners P-Backs and the Adidas Supercritical TPE up there in my experience. And that has something to do with both the firmness of those foams themselves and also the way they're constructed in the platform. In the Vaporfly, you can see here, this foam is not gonna be very durable at all. I have about 100 miles on these shoes and this foam is just completely eroded. Uh, I did some downhill speed on my last half marathon and it completely chewed up the heel of this Vaporfly. Versus the Adidas Light Strike Pro here, I have a similar number of miles in this one, but the heel here isn't degrading as much and it could be due to the rubber, that's true, it could be, but it looks like the foam itself is just holding up a bit better. Now in the Pro 3, we're also starting to see some degradation of the foam around here in the back. Again, it could be due to the rubber, but the foam in the midsole is holding up pretty well. All right guys, so in terms of what they're best for, the Power Run PB and the Zoom X are, in our experience, the fastest, most efficient, and most comfortable foams for half marathon to marathon racing. Whereas the Adidas Light Strike Pro, that's really gonna be best for those 10K to half marathon distance efforts because it's a bit firmer and you need to put a bit more power into it to get the most benefit in our experience. Then finally, we have the Tracksmith Elliott Runner that p backs in there is gonna be great for daily training efforts when you want something a bit firmer to build up that leg strength. And it's also gonna be great for up-tempo work when you want a firmer, non-plated shoe to help you hit those fastest training paces. All right guys, so there we have it. That was our Super Foam Showdown with this batch of four. Let me know what other foams you want me to look at next time and thank you for following, thank you for liking. I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running shoes.